Okay, first real lesson of the chapter here, geometric vectors. And calling them geometric vectors is not going to make much sense to understand what I mean by geometric, maybe until we start talking about algebraic vectors. So for now, all I'll say about geometric vectors really is that geometric means we're drawing them. We're drawing what a vector is. Now, I haven't even said really what a vector is, but uh, the geometric part is we're going to draw them. Okay, first, so let's go after vectors. Vectors. Quantities having magnitude only are called scalars. A very important word in this whole chapter is scalar because it basically describes what isn't a vector. A scalar are anything that can be described with just a number. If just a number will do, then we're talking about a scalar. Now, quantities that have both magnitude and direction are called vectors. The important part there is the direction part. That's what's added. If you want to talk about something that has to have its direction attached to it, then we're talking about a vector as well. Say like this. Say you asked, Mr. Todd, how far do you live from here? And I said five kilometers. Five kilometers is a scalar. That's how far away something is. And a number will do. Five kilometers. Notice I asked how far away Mr. Todd lives. If I instead asked, where do you live, Mr. Todd? I might include a detail and say, oh, I live five kilometers northeast of here. And the direction is the important part. Where do you live? You see, so that's how it can easily change to, from being a scalar to a vector if the direction is important. So here's an example. Uh, the one just, uh, like I said, Sarah lives 25 kilometers north. Or sorry, Sarah lives 25 kilometers from Brantford would be a scalar. And then Jim lives 25 kilometers north of Brantford. That's a very dissimilar thing, but a vector. Uh, those of you with some physics background, the first one's a distance. So scalars, when we're talking about distance. And the second one we call displacement, when we include the direction. Up till now, that direction was only positive or negative. But moving forward, we're going to open that up to all sorts of directions. Um, another scalar, speed. A car is traveling 80 kilometers an hour. Just the number will do. What speed are you traveling? 80. That's a scalar. But if you switch to velocity and say a plan is traveling due east at 300 kilometers an hour, now we're talking about a vector because the Im important piece of information that's been added is the direction. Another example of scalar is mass. Ken has a mass of 100 kil kilograms. If he's just talking about his uh, mass there, how much he's made up of, it's 100 kil kilograms. But weight is something different, and that might be new a new concept for some of you, is that weight is how much you're being pulled down. So Amy has a weight of 530 newtons downward. So the weight includes what direction you're being pulled. If this is difficult at all, think of it this way. When you go out into space, you still have a mass. You're still made up of stuff. 100 kilograms of stuff, but there's no longer any weight. You're not being pulled down in a certain direction. So weight has a direction pulled down towards, for us, usually the earth. And uh, mass is just how much stuff you're made of. So if you, again, if you're confused at all, mass is how much stuff you're made up of, whereas weight is which direction you're being pulled. So simply, those that, that big idea is sort of rough, but simply put, uh, a geometric vector is denoted by a directed line segment. So we'll, we'll just be drawing lines, like, like the one you see here. A, a line segment with an arrow on the end. The arrow is very important. The arrow tells you which direction we're talking about, because the vector that points this way uh, will be different than a vector that points that way. Um, so how do we label these things? A vector from point A to B is called a, B, and there's a little vector symbol over top, and I hope you can see that arrow there, but I'm going to really go over it so you can really see, to indicate that we're talking about a vector from A to B, when we write A, B, we don't just write A, B like we did with line segments, we put an arrow over top. And this is important. This might screw you up. Oops. Um, this might screw you up a little bit. Um, so come back to this, and this will get... Uh, the highlight, ooh, do I get extra, ooh, red highlighter coming up here. Some of you have been in my class, know that one. Um, a is called the tail, or initial point, and B is called the tip. So when we're talking about vectors, those two words are important in that the tail is right here, and the tip is out there. So sometimes when we're talking later on, those two words will become important. 
Um, other notations, sometimes instead of having two points like a and b, we just call the vector u. And again, I want to really reiterate that when we write a vector, we write an arrow over the top. Ah, sometimes you'll see somebody draw a half arrow like that when they're drawing. You might see me do that sometimes. But some kind of arrow indicator so everybody knows you're talking about vectors. Now, some textbooks instead will go bold. I don't know if you can see this is bolded, but some textbooks really bold the letter in when you're talking about textbooks. Uh, so that you can see it's a vector, but most of what you'll see, you'll see with the arrow notation. So magnitude of a vector, another important concept, so I'm going to treat myself with uh, some extra red highlighter here. Ooh, I was already in red mode, so here we go. Um, the magnitude of a vector is indicated by these um, absolute value bars, and the absolute value bars indicate I just want to know how long the vector is. Okay, a couple ideas here. All we got is equal and opposite to talk about and a quick parallelogram example, and then we're wrapping this one up. Equal vectors. When mathematicians begin to deal with a new class of mathematical objects, and for today we're talking about vectors, they consider several basic issues. One of the issues is the notion of equality. For these objects, under what condition will we consider the two of them to be identical or equal? And here, here's the definition. And you're going to see why, as we move along, this is the important definition for equal vectors. And to be equal vectors, they have to have the same magnitude and the same direction. It won't be enough for them to be the same length. They have to have the same magnitude and direction. So take a look at these examples. Part A, A, B, and X, Y. I haven't measured them specifically, but they're representing two vectors that are going in the exact same direction, and they're the exact same length. So A, B is equal to X, Y. Part B... They show us two different vectors that are going in the same direction, but they're obviously very different lengths, and so we say that they are not equal vectors. And then part C, A, B, and P, Q. A, B, and P, Q look like they're about the same length, but they're not going in the same directions, so we say they are not equal. Uh, note that equal vectors do not have to have the same location in space. Uh, A, B, and X, Y was the important example there, just because they weren't on top of each other doesn't mean they weren't equal. They were side by side, but they uh, they had the same magnitude and same direction. Uh, opposite vectors. Opposite vectors have the same magnitude, but act in exactly the opposite direction. So take a look at the example. There's U and there's V, and U and V are the same length, but heading in opposite direction. We call them opposite. And the other way we can write that is that U is equal to negative V. More on that on later sections, but it probably makes sense here when you first think about it is that U would be negative V. That makes sense in, in, in the 2D case here, and the 1D case here. We'll get to 2D later. Um, last example. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. That's important in this question is that we know we're at the hop that it's a parallelogram. It means that the two sides... Um, two opposite sides are equal, are, sorry, heading in the same direction. So take a look at the vectors in the picture and really look over these examples. Uh, they, they're very basic, but it really helps to really narrow down exactly what we're talking about here. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to try and highlight these things in green as I go. So it says AB. There's AB vector right there. And DC, there's DC vector right there. Those things are heading in the same direction. And they have the same length. So they're both equal. AB is equal to DC. And in this case, they gave it another label there, U. So there's the first one. I'll try and erase those so I can do the next one and highlight those. Next one, DA. So DA goes this direction here. There it is, DA. And they say DA is equal to CB because it's a parallelogram. They're heading in the same direction and the same length. And those ones were called V in the picture. They, held, they are all the same. Erase those highlighting. Do the next one. BA equals CD. So uh, BA goes from here to here. And I know there's no arrow on the end of it, but it just said B to A. Uh, the arrows were on there to indicate the U and the V, but BA, they're specifically saying in this example, the BA is the vector going from B to A. So that's really, and maybe I'm going to do this in red instead so we can really draw it. I'll draw it in red. The vector BA in the picture would be this vector here. There's BA. And uh, it's equal to CD, which would be going from C to D, but it wouldn't be equal to U because U was in the original picture heading in this direction from left to right from A to B. So BA and CD are equal, but they would be called negative U. Similarly, let me erase those. Do, do. 
one more. There you go. Okay, so similarly, AD, which AD would be this vector here, going from A to D, and that vector is equal to BC, which is going from B to C. Those have the same length and same direction, but they wouldn't be called V because V, as shown in the original picture, was from D to A, so, but the, so these AD and BC that we're talking about would be equal to negative V. Watch, rewind that video and watch all those examples again so all that makes, all that's very clear. And then, so AB and CD are called opposite vectors because AB goes in this direction and CD goes in that direction. So they're opposite. And then the last thing, AD, which is heading from here to here, and CB are opposite. So CB goes this direction. See, they're heading in opposite directions. And really drawing on your on, on here really does help. Um, maybe in your textbook you hopefully won't be drawing, but you may have to take your pencil and sort of point in the direction so you know which way you're talking about. And so the homework is in the Vectors and Calculus book, 279, 1, 2, 4 to 11. If you don't have the textbook, get some pictures off somebody or contact me and I'll get you one. Um, and that's it for today. Pretty straightforward, I think, but the homework is so important. It's laying the groundwork for some uh, tougher stuff later. So if you find this really straightforward, well, great. That is wonderful, but don't use that to skip over the homework because it lays the foundation for later stuff. Okay, we'll see you back here on...